The TIE Defender is quickly becoming one of my most favourite ships to run in Star Wars Squadrons. Despite it only being released literally a week ago, I'm seeing huge potential in this ship. But don't just take my word for it, higher tier players are starting to run this ship more over Interceptor. Now of course the TIE Defender definitely has its strengths and weaknesses. For example, this Starfighter is much stronger at taking out other Starfighters that aren't necessarily Interceptor, but does struggle to take on the flagship without the strength of the reflect hull that the Interceptor has. But in today's video, I'm going to be showing you one of the strongest offensive loadouts that I have for the TIE Defender. Now, these aren't just based on personal opinion. Some of these components are purposely chosen to negate debuffs and to get the absolute most out of other chosen components. And just before we jump into it, if you want more loadout videos like these, definitely hit the like button so it really shows me that you want to see more. But with that out of the way, let's get right into it. So, these are all the components that I run for my TIE Defender. The primary weapon is standard laser cannon, the left auxiliary is APS, the right auxiliary is rockets, countermeasures is particles, hull is agile, shields are fortified, and engine is standard. So let me break these down one by one. Standard laser cannon is just the general be-all, best-all cannon that you can run on the TIE Defender. Guided has a massive nerf on how much damage output it puts on right now, so it's just not effective even against interceptors. The A-Wing is still king of the hill when it comes to all other starfighters, and the massive damage debuff on all guided laser cannon variants is just not worth picking right now. Plasburst cannons did get a nerf as well, so I really wouldn't recommend those either. And ion cannons are just too situational. For left auxiliary, we're running APS, Advanced Power Systems. So you must run this auxiliary on every single TIE Defender build you have. This makes the TIE Defender super special. It gives a moderate overcharge to any system with max power. So if you have max power and shield, you hit the button, you get a ton of boost instantly. Same for lasers and same for shields. Now, get this, you don't really Really want to be using advanced power system on engines or lasers these charge up super quick you can get one bar of boost almost instantaneously when you hit max power to engines so there's no point in putting it into that same with lasers they charge really quickly so there's no need to put them in there either but putting it into shields is seriously overpowered Putting all power to shields and then hitting advanced power systems gains you literally 50% of system charge gain on shields. I'll explain why this is super special for the TIE Defender a little bit later on in the video. Next up is rockets. Despite the 40 damage nerf on each rocket fired, it is still very reasonable to use. It's great for capital ship damage, it's great for firing against other players, and because there isn't any TIE Defenders on the enemy team, you don't necessarily have to worry too much about ion rockets. That is, unless you want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with A-Wings. But that, again, necessarily comes down to how good you are at a dogfighter. Because really good A-Wing players are going to be nigh on impossible to hit with them. The other option I would recommend if you see a lot of A-Wings is anti-Starfighter missiles. The quick lock-on for those rockets make it very easy to target A-Wings going at max speed. And because your ability to lock on again and fire another missile is quicker than their countermeasures, which can be really good at taking them down with ease if they've already used their countermeasure and they're having to wait nine seconds to use another. And since guided laser cannons have been heavily nerfed, this is the only real auxiliary that can counter interceptors. Seeker Mines is another option to go with, but expert A-Wing plays are going to see this a mile off. For countermeasures, it's particles. I really wouldn't go with any other. They are the be-all, best-all countermeasures are compared to all others. The cooldown is probably the strongest thing about it. It's a nine-second cooldown, which is the shortest out of all of them. And despite you only getting three compared to the Seeker Warheads 4, it's the cooldown that makes it really, really important. Now, this is where it gets interesting. For Hull, I go Agile Hull. Now, I go for this based on the fact that I'm sacrificing the least amount for Agile Hull. TIE Defenders have roughly about 400 hull on standard. So when you pick Agile hull, you're only losing 20% of already a very small hull, which means whilst I gain 38.5 acceleration and 11.5 maneuverability, I only lose 80 hull. That's a massive gain for the TIE Defender without much trade-off. 
because the hull is so small, 20% of that hull isn't a lot really. So I really recommend running Agile Hull on almost all of your TIE Defender builds. Next up for shields, I'm running Fortify Deflector. Now this reduces shield generation by 25%, but gains me 20% shield. Why would I want to run this when the TIE Defender really relies on shield? It's because of our auxiliary advanced power systems. The negative about fortified deflector shields is the fact that you regenerate shields slower. This is really bad for elongated dogfights. However, advanced power systems recharges very quickly. It only has a cooldown of 20 seconds. So when you put full power the shields and then hit that advanced power system, you gain 50% of shield instantly, no matter when you took damage. One thing to take note of with shields is that you don't regenerate shields until you've been out of combat for about five seconds. This is what really hurts fortified shields, but that debuff is completely gone thanks to advanced power system. So you're pretty much getting all of that shield in return for you just being a little bit of a better player. Just remember to put all power to shields before you hit advanced power system and then there you go. You've just negated all of the debuff of fortified shields. That is what makes advanced power systems and fortified deflector so strong for TIE defenders and it's why it makes them so tanky. This ship is so complex and requires a lot of training that it becomes very difficult to kill because high skilled players are managing their power, their shields and their components effectively. And this is why I can just keep dogfighting for ages. Better yet, if you're really exhausted from fighting numerous players and you're on defense and your flagship is miles away and you don't want to fly all the way there just to resupply, this is where you want to put all power balanced. I know, crazy, right? Why would you want to put all power to balance? It is because you almost get a mini resupply by putting all powers to balance and then hitting advanced power system auxiliary. You get 30% system charge gained on your boost, your lasers, and your shield all in one go. And from there, you're instantly ready to fight again. This is why I love advanced power systems and why I love the TIE Defender. The TIE Defender is supposed to be seen as this really, really powerful starfighter. And I know the guys at EA Motive had to balance the ship so it wouldn't be the overpowered destroyer that it is in canon. But honestly, I think they've made it very balanced in gameplay and still fulfilled canon. Because if you're really good with this ship and you really know what you're doing, this thing is unkillable. Now, many of you are probably wondering why I'm not running Unstable Twin Engine on the TIE Defender. Just like Agile Hull, it's minusing 20% of your max health. So the same rule should apply, right? Like you're only going to lose an extra 80% more hull. And in return, you get more max speed and acceleration. So why aren't we running that? Well, as of recording this video, there is a little bit of a bug that comes with unstable engines. When you highlight it for the TIE Defender, it says you only lose 20% of max health. However, when you apply it, you also lose 20% of your max shields also. So despite the infograph saying that you do not lose any shields, you actually do. So don't run twin engine on a TIE Defender because it will completely negate the extra shield you got with Fortified Deflector. And as you can see here, I've got 240 extra shield. I put on the twin engine and then it's gone. So that's something to take note of. If they do fix it where it only removes health, I highly recommend running it until it's fixed. But judging by by balancing issues, I think it's probably going to keep the minor shield as well. So that is my ultra offensive TIE Defender build for Star Wars Squadrons. I'm really proud of this build, probably more than all other builds I've worked on, mostly because I sat down, did the math, I tried to figure out what would be best to negate certain debuffs, what buffs would be best to negate those debuffs alongside it. And honestly, I feel like this build is generally far better than the standard TIE Defender build. I would not be surprised if a lot of TIE Defender players are just going to run this build and nothing else. So let's look at gameplay wise. How do you play the TIE Defender with this build? You've got to treat the TIE Defender almost like it's an interceptor. You've got the speed and maneuverability of an interceptor now, right? So you kind of have to act like one without the agile hull in say Eckhart's Ladder's interceptor build. So instead of being able to hide yourself from lock-on by other players, you have to be really careful of your shields instead. Because once those shields are gone, you are just dead. It takes like literally three or four laser hits until all your hull is gone and you're down. So don't worry about what your health says. If it's 50, if it's 70, if it's 100, does not matter. You want to be keeping an eye on those shields. And if your shields are down and your advanced power systems is on cooldown, you're in major trouble. So if you go against players that are running an even amount of different starfighters, rockets are really helpful. It gets you that extra 
power boost when you're taking down a B-wing or a Y-wing, for example. Same goes for X-wing if they're flying in a straight line or not very maneuverable. And the same goes for support as well. If you do find there is a really good support and you really need to take them down very, very quickly, I do recommend running ion rockets instead of standard barrage rockets. This can shred its shields pretty quickly. And honestly, the same goes for X-wing and Y-wings and B-wings alike. So I do recommend having a secondary build with ion rockets instead because it is a very situational component. The TIE Defender is actually very good at taking out frigates as well. When I'm flying towards it and I've got full shields, full power to boost, I actually like using my advanced power systems on firepower. This is where I'm barraging my rockets. I've got 25% damage buff because I've overloaded my lasers. Really good at taking out quite a lot of damage. And because the TIE Defender can drift almost instantaneously after putting power to engines, it's probably best to do a frontal run on Nebulon B, do a 180 drift behind it, and then boost across doing a second run as you head to your side of the map. I've had really great success with this, and if I am being tailed, you just got to keep drifting again and again and again, making it really hard for the enemy player to hit you. However, if you're on attack and both Nebulon Bs are down, the TIE Defender starts to struggle a little. It's not very good at attacking subsystems, in my opinion. The Interceptor's Reflect Hull is so much more effective at taking out subsystems compared to the TIE Defender's shields, for example. So in situations like that, I do swap over to the TIE Interceptor afterward, and that pretty much concludes how I play TIE Defender on offense. Now, if we're playing on defense, that is where the TIE Defender really shines. This ship will outgun, outrun, and be more tankier than X-Wings, Y-Wings, B-Wings, U-Wings, the like. The only time it does struggle is against A-Wings. Really good A-Wing players, mind you. So that is where you want to be running rockets anytime somebody tries to do a run on your cruisers. And if your cruisers are down, you want to be very close to your Star Destroyer and take out anybody coming too close to your shield generators or power systems. When I'm staying very close to my side of the map, I tend to put all of my power to lasers, especially with advanced power systems, because I care more about the damage rather than maneuverability. Because unless I'm being chased down while hovering around my my cruisers i want to have as much damage as possible to take out any enemy player so that is actually it for defense the tide defender just has one role in defense and that's just purely dogfighting i wouldn't worry about farming ai with it i wouldn't worry about trying to take the raider out with it you should be taking out other players and to be honest i think you should be running rockets at all time in defense yes you can use iron rockets as well if you find that there is not as many a-wing players plus it is really effective at taking out the shields on a cr90 when you're on defense and that is pretty much everything i've got to say about about my most offensive TIE Defender loadout in Star Wars Squadrons. What do you personally think of the build? Do you think you have a better build than this one? And also for our question of the day, do you prefer playing the TIE Defender or the TIE Interceptor in Star Wars Squadrons? Now, let me know your reasons why in gameplay only. Don't tell me you like the TIE Defender because it's better in canon, for example. Let me know why you like playing that particular ship gameplay wise in Star Wars Squadrons. So let me know all your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. I'm actually going to be reading all of these because I'm super interested in how you guys like this build and the builds that you run with Tide Defender. But other than that, guys, I have been Charlie, you've been watching X2, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys.